You're listening to the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast with Chicago attorney Dave Scriven Young. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor, which is the app that I use to record and edit the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast, so let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, and it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 221 of the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast for June 7th, 2020. My name is Dave Scriven Young, an attorney from Chicago, Illinois, and I'll be your host. This podcast takes you on a daily journey to discover key principles in the areas of marketing, sales, and leadership for attorneys. So what we're going to be doing in the next several episodes is talking about what the barriers are to having a diverse team. And this comes from John C. Maxwell's book, Leader Shift. And the first barrier to having a diverse team is a fear of conflict. So when you have a diverse team, you'll have differences of opinion. You'll have a difference of perspective, a difference of worldview. And that almost inevitably leads to conflict, says John, Dr. John C. Maxwell. And But what we've said in the past uh, couple of episodes is that this conflict will actually help us. This uh, diversity actually will help us uh, for a lot of different reasons. But I, I like to think about this in the context of, of what I do on a daily basis, which is uh, litigation. So, you know, I practice commercial litigation, construction litigation, environmental litigation, and that is all about conflict. And, you know, for the first few years of my practice, I saw, I tended to see the other side as uh, the enemy, as uh, someone who uh, is always in the wrong, as someone who um, is just out to make a quick buck. You know, I'm usually on the defense side, so, um, you know, that it was sort of an easy way to a black and white, if you will, version of things that... You know, I saw uh, a bad guy and a good guy, right? And so, you know, I really came to see that that was just the wrong way of looking at it. Because what you typically have is um, something that happens for a period of time. And then you have someone that is um, upset about the status quo. Either, you know, the other side they feel that the other side didn't live up to their bargain or they did something intentionally to them, um, like a tort, etc., right? And so you have this conflict. And the only way under our system to um, resolve that conflict, if you can't get it done amicably, is through uh, the court system. And so you have a, a plaintiff's attorney on one side, you have a defense attorney on the other side, and, you know, they duke it out on behalf of their attorneys, on, on behalf of their clients, excuse me, right? That's what I thought it was. But I, now I tend to think of uh, that conflict as actually being a good thing. Because, you know, without a plaintiff's attorney, I wouldn't have a job, right? I mean, it's just really that simple. Um, and so I actually come to view the plaintiff's attorney as, you know, someone that I really want to work with. Um, not because I don't want to, um, uh, you know, advocate on behalf of my client. The opposite is true. I really, you know, I zealously advocate for my advocate for my client every day. Um, but I see them as a um, as a way to get to a solution, because as John C. Maxwell says in his book, um, really having uh, a conflict actually helps things talks about, you know, how a uh, marriage counselor w- once said that, you know, conflicts are inevitable in marriage, but really it's the way that you deal with those conflicts is the way that, um, is, is your way forward, is your way to a happy marriage, is if you deal with a conflict in a way that 
um, uh, you're able to uh, have healthy conflict as, as opposed to an unhealthy conflict, that's the way to happiness. And it's the same way, I think, in a litigation context. If the lawyers are able to stay in that healthy mode um, where they're not ter- trying to tear each other apart, but they're working together um, in order to find a solution on behalf of their clients, that's the best way to do it. Now, don't get me wrong, I've been in many, many situations where you know, I find myself unable to work with the other side and that could be for a number of different reasons. Um, it could be that, you know, it's just a lawyer style is more, you know, conflict oriented in the way that they, the way that they practice. But also it could be, you know, a demand from their client or an expectation of their client. And so, yeah, I mean, there are lots of times where, um, you know, opposing counsel and I, and I don't see eye to eye. And uh, there are things that have to be done about that. But usually what, what I think we all want to do is, is engage in, in the healthy conflicts. So John C. Maxwell goes through uh, several of the, the differences between an unhealthy conflict and a healthy conflict. Number one, if you're in an unhealthy conflict mode, you take differences personally. Whereas in a healthy conflict, you see differences impartially. In an unhealthy contact conflict, you dump personal baggage on the other person. A healthy conflict desires to know the person. Unhealthy conflicts, uh, they search for retaliation, whereas the healthy conflict searches for resolution. And that's, I think that is the key um, in, in litigation context, is that you really, no matter what side you're on, you really want to be able to search for resolution as opposed to retaliation. Because I think... Lots of times, um, you know, I have done some plaintiff's work, and uh, lots of times, they're, that's just what they're out for. Um, plaintiffs are oftentimes looking f- for retaliation; they're looking for revenge, and they see it as a they see a lawsuit as a way to get after them. Um, unfortunately, sometimes for the client, they don't realize that it's going to get very expensive for them um, if they continue along the line of retaliation instead of looking for resolution. Because they're going to pay their attorney uh, to continue prosecuting their case in a way that's not efficient. That's ju- you're just looking out for revenge, and that's costly as opposed to trying to come to some uh, resolution. Unhealthy conflicts result in hurt, whereas healthy conflicts result in helpfulness. Unhealthy conflicts seek a quick resolution, whereas a healthy conflict seeks an understanding. And that's where I think a good you know, like mediator comes into play where um, a mediator tries to have, you know, one side understand what the other side is saying and vice versa, as opposed to, you know, coming to some quick uh, resolution. An unhealthy conflict holds back from the conversation. A healthy conflict becomes part of the conversation. Unhealthy conflicts uh, value self above solutions. A healthy conflict uh, value solutions above self. Self, excuse me. Health unhealthy conflict defends their territory as opposed to a healthy conflict which opens up new territory. And healthy con unhealthy conflicts make the team worse, whereas healthy conflicts make the team better. So as you look through, um, as you look at your team, no matter what team that is, um, whether that's your um, team at work or team in an organization, what have you, do you have um, a diverse team around you? If not, is it because you fear conflict? And if you fear conflict, what you really need to do is put into um, put some procedures into place that will help you deal with that conflict so you can have healthy conflict as opposed to unhealthy conflict. Because un- unhealthy conflict within a team will uh, destroy it, whereas healthy conflict in the team will make things uh, much better uh, for yourself, for your team, for your company or organization, and then also better for uh, your customer or client who's coming to you to find answers. And then in the litigation context, reminding yourself and reminding the client that we're, se- we're seeking healthy conflict as opposed to unhealthy conflict because healthy conflict is the way to get things done quicker, to get the things done more efficiently, and um, in a way that's not going to tear 
each other apart because I guarantee you, and I've seen this before, when one uh, one party goes after the other personally, the other person's going to co- want to go just as strongly, just as viciously against the other person. So uh, for your daily action item today, I want you to think about what sort of uh, procedures and practices could you put in place in your workplace, in your organization, to ensure uh, healthy conflict occurs as opposed to unhealthy conflict. So what I would invite you to join the discussion, you can leave me a voicemail by going to anchor.fm slash attorney DSY and hitting that message button. You can also leave me a comment for me to play on the show or a question for me to answer on the show. You could also leave me a comment or question on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Attorney DSY. I'm also on LinkedIn and my personal profile. So please let me know if you have any comments about this episode. Tell me what you think about this podcast or give me a topic you'd like to hear about. This podcast is on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and Anchor. So please be sure to subscribe and rate and review. I also want to invite you to the next session of the Lawyer's Emotional Intelligence Book Club. Continuing with Dr. Chatterjee's book, The Stress Solution, the next session will be Wednesday, June 10th at 7 p.m. Central. You can find out more at facebook.com slash lawyers EQ. Have a great day or night, and remember to fight for the lifestyle that you want and become the rainmaker that you need to be.